Hi all, I have another recommended game to show you by Gallagher on the Lila Chess forums, more games for commenting if you want to contribute there, if you create any games yourself. So this one, uh, Lila Chess playing white against Komodo, ni Komodo 9.02 on four cores. Uh, so let's have a look at this game. C4, the English opening. E5, Knight C3, Knight C6, Knight F3, Knight F6. G3, Bishop B4, Bishop G2, D6, both sides castle, D3. Uh, so this puts the brakes on E4 from black. Now we have H6. There is a slight downside of this move, which is tapped into by Lila Chass, which is to play Knight A4. This guarantees uh, to try and get this bishop, basically, to grab this dark square bishop. Um, with uh, well there's the option of taking it now the bishop goes to c5 but actually Leela doesn't do that at the moment b3 rook e8 bishop b2 the bishop drops back and now actually it is taken a takes h3 bishop f5 it's not such a big deal at the moment it would seem the dark square bishop because uh, it's a bit locked in uh, this structure e4 bishop g6 now knight h4 trying to get the light square bishop is komodo uh, sort of concerned not really it seems knight h5 so it doesn't matter about it, it believes it doesn't matter about losing both bishops we have bishop c3 and uh, the bishop can't move back anyway here because of queen takes h5 by the way um but we have knight f4 and now knight takes g6 is played tactically it's difficult to get out of uh, not recapturing that if knight takes g2 then knight takes e5 this position white has a slight edge so basically uh knight takes g6 was played so white's with the bishop pair here a4 knight f8 f4 this seems like a logical exploitation of this dark square bishop pressure on e5 knight d4 so interesting positional decisions now this is the first one what to do well either just takes on d4 actually this gives some mobility for the center for e5 later now we see the move queen c2 which connects the rooks also keeps an eye on a4 and this is interesting here after knight d7 waiting for the knight to commit there we see the move b4 now and now black plays c5 a bit oblivious to the possibility now after b5 well the more abstract concept uh, as humans one might have that if there's no counterplay on the queen side or very little then white could have a free hand later on the king side that is a, a basic premise knight f6 queen f2 queen d7 now white does play on the king side g4 queen e6 queen g3 queen e7 and now a really powerful move here it looks as though uh white would like to use this rook but what about the a pawn what does white play here if i give you five seconds to pause the video okay white does play rook a e1 letting the a pawn go because this e5 break is very dangerous black played king h8 if rook takes a4 here e5 knight h7 this position is dangerous because the queen's holding the rook as well as this one so this is possible and this position is very bad for black g5 cutting the knight this kind of position is is devastating for black in fact uh, so it's very difficult with bishop d5 coming to see what black is doing there so that's why it, it seems as though you know rook takes a4 is is too dangerous so we have king h8 e5 takes takes now you've got the there's the blast of the rook on the f file on f7 and the bishop joins in so it's a beautiful bishop now we have rook f8 rook f2 and yeah all the time this this pawn has been offered and black actually takes time out to take that here and leader's pretty calm in this position just plays h4 
for cutting the knight a bit more and now putting pressure on f7 f6 and now e6 this is quite a dislocating pawn rook g8 and guess what is played in this position if i give you five seconds okay pretty logical looking g5 to try and blast down that f file black play rook a3 here if hg h takes g this is devastating after check and then queen g6 that's like mating the h file black can't afford to open that h file nor the f file as you as you might expect uh, if f takes rook f7 here actually there's a key move in particular which amplifies my advantage which is h5 uh, for example g4 this is a bit desperate this position uh, is is just very very nice that's winning the exchange in the game basically there um, that's that's pretty devastating h5 um, you know, can give you an alternative say queen b8 queen takes and then rook c7 and then there's going to be e7 with the idea of bishop f7 so that's going to be crushing doesn't matter what black does here it seems uh, also if we look at um, knight f6 here so this is on h5 knight f6 there's another try this just gets blasted tactically can you see what white can play in this position okay just taking here which shows the power of this f file because now queen c7 with rook h7 mating as a big threat that would have to give up the queen so this is why yeah g5 is totally uh justified it's thematic looking it's beautiful it's tactically sound g5 it seems black has underestimated all of this and in fact now why it's not even interested in opening up a file because black's ready on the g file anyway that would backfire on white to like take over here <laughs> would backfire on white no Lena was just interested in squishing here now with g6 in this particular case now knight f8 and h5 keeping a very very dangerous restriction of not just the king but the knight and in fact black approaches zugzwang here uh, black can't afford to go into a self pin clearly because of rookie one by the way uh, so that's just dropping the knight uh, so black has to try to count well black's getting into a zugzwang we can see now after rook e2 rook a8 rook f e1 black's not really doing anything rook a4 and now uh to increase the position a nifty move here bishop g2 with the possibility of this battery to hit b7 rook a8 queen f3 and black's really had enough sees it has been fatal this position basically and sacrifices knight in desperation pure desperation if we look at this rook b8 or rook a7 let's have a look at rook b8 just queen e4 either there's rook queen e4 and you can see black's in a zugzwang the knight can't move the rook can't move the king can't move this queen can't move without allowing e7 uh, if this rook moves then we just take on b7 uh, so yeah it's pretty hopeless um, if queen e8 then e7 this position with queen e6 and if knight e5 here can you see what white can play in this position if i give you five seconds this is a nice tactic which would exploit white's big advantages rook takes e5 and then the idea bishop d5 this just crashes through for example, rook a8, queen takes g8, winning the exchange back with interest. Because after rook takes e5, threatening e8, rook e8, and now there's just rook d5, threatening rook d8, and the black king can't help here. If rook takes e7, rook d8 is chatmating. After rook e8 there. So this is totally gone, this position. Here there's just rook d8. 
yeah it's all works like clockwork there it's a total zugzwang which is why uh it's which is why knight takes g6 is played black's just totally dead so giving up the piece it's it's all over by the shouting basically the game continues a little bit though uh so taking there bring that and now lovely e7 check really good tactical move actually because after rook takes e7 guess what white plays what's the idea okay rook fe1 kind of forcing another position where black's not making any progress whatsoever black can't move the rook as a rookie eight mating and in the game continuation black took on e2 but we have the scenario now after rook e6 where black is really tied down we have a f black only being able to play pawn moves so the rook can't move because of rookie a uh, so there's only pawn moves here basically uh, we have f5 and the king just comes up the board uh, over here and here the game was adjudicated as a win for white as an example white could just take here and then just take that pawn and just come back for more after we'll take this it's just totally hopeless for black so uh an interesting positional game there in the english opening uh just leela is the master of pawn breaks knows exactly when to sacrifice some material to support a pawn break uh the bishop was really strong enough it had a concrete target the fr f7 this g5 wasn't uh, to, to open up files it was actually to install g6 which was really counterplay destroying to the extent of creating a zugzwang position once that g6 form pawn was installed and yet again i'm finding myself to be honest learning from leela chess games myself i think these are really fascinating games to study from from the pawn break perspective from the perspective of reducing counterplay managing counterplay increasing pressure increasing space all sorts of things. I think they're really instructive. I hope you do too. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.